Plenty of you have asked for this, so I'm here to keep my word and deliver this 200 days better Minecraft video. There are plenty of bosses in many dimensions awaiting my arrival, for which I am called to take out. Within these dimensions are many structures filled with loot, tricks, and traps waiting to be explored. There are also a lot of beautiful biomes with unique mobs that are yet to be seen. So join me on this adventure as I try and survive 200 days in better Minecraft. Let's get right into it. 200 days, let's do this. Alright, so it's already half the day. I'm day 101. Uh, also, as an update, I have these resource packs on, so a few things have changed. Some things haven't really. I got the textures back on the netherite armor, though. That's all I really care about since it looks sick. And yeah. All right, well, let's continue on the house. Haha, -ha, I am back. Voiceover 7. Anyways, I continued where we left off in the previous video and kept on going with the construction of the first floor. Midway, I ran out of resources, so I went out to to collect some more and I was able to finish the floor entirely and shortly went to sleep after. Day 102, I found out that there are two variants to the Golden Door in Better Minecraft, so I crafted both. Unfortunately, the first one did not work, unless you have redstone, I'm assuming, so I ended up settling with the other one. Maybe the other one works? That was clean too. And it works. We'll take it. Nah, that looks too... That's too rich for me. I can only afford that if I did some NFT scams. Anyone want to invest in my new project called The Seven Coin? Here is how it works. You put all your money in, and then after seven days, I take it all out. Kind of sounds familiar, like almost every project. Anyways, I continued on the construction process and collected some sand, which would later be turned into glass. I added this unique stairway that will go up to the second floor, and shortly after, started laying out the second floor and then I went to sleep. Day 103 I continued on completing the second floor which costed a lot of planks so I went out to chop down some trees to gather more resources in order to finish it. I completed it and started adding the same pattern that was on the first floor on the walls to the second floor. I did this for the rest of the day and then went to sleep. Day 104, I used the glass that I created a couple days ago and started adding it to the house. I had an idea for my storage room where I would add glass to the floor to give it some more light since it would be enclosed. I looked more into different types of glass and found this one called glow light glass and I was instantly intrigued. So I made my way to the nether. Whoa. Does this look different? Does it look better? It's more veiny. Like a cock. I quickly found the shimmer sand and collected a lot of it. Of course, I had to listen to the copyright free music in the background. <gasps> ah, you see, that's the sh drop that it comes with here. I crafted the shimmer sand and felt obligated to get rid of the music. You know what? I never want to hear this music again. Are you ready for this badass scene? The music's gonna. <gasps> How did he get up? What was that witchcraft? Look, look, he's just. <gasps> No, I caught myself. Oh my god. I'm a beast. On the beat drop. Into the lava. Jesus. That was stupid. This is stupid. What am I doing? Well, that was supposed to be badass, and I just turned out looking like an absolute dumbass. After the battle, I collected the ancient debris that was on site. Alright, because I'm a Minecraft veteran, I know that there is lava behind here. What did I say? I warp stoned home and started the process of turning the shimmer sand into glow light glass, and soon after went to sleep. Day 105, I didn't wait for all the glow light glass to finish cooking up because I wanted to see if it would actually look good, so I tested it out on the floor. I really liked the aesthetic that glow light glass had, so I ended up replacing all of the regular panes that were all over the house. I think it goes better, honestly. I like it. As I was replacing the glass around the house, of course, I had to tell a sh joke. What do you call a glass? What? what? Jesus, dude. I cannot do stand-up comedy. What do you call a glass? Piece of glass. What do you call a piece of glass that's just been hurt? A glass pane. Any laughers? Any laughers? Yeah, I think that just solidified my presence in the stand up comedy scene. Catch me at your local comedy club, if those even exist anymore. Pretty sure Will Smith would get out of his seat to slap me in the face for making such a garbage joke. Actually, you need an NFT to get in to watch me. 
Actually, I don't think he could get in without the NFT. Days, I feel like it's flying by. 105, what? Look, I've got nothing done. There's no way people spend like 30 days building their house and feel accomplished. I started the process of transferring the kitchen in the old house into the new house. And I came up with this idea to have it under the stairs, which I thought it looked pretty good. Shortly after, I would go to sleep. Day 106, I put the last smoker into the kitchen wall because that was bothering me, that one that was missing. I continued the construction on the second floor and started making a separation between the open area and the storage room. I started to collect some clay because I wanted to make terracotta to spice up the second floor. After gathering the resources to create terracotta, I went to sleep. Day 107, I tried to implement the black terracotta and to this day, I just still don't get the way to position it. It is so annoying, and here's my struggles. I forgot about how toxic this gets. Oh my god, dude. Is it like this? Nice. Dude, uh, that has to be it. Nice. There we go. I also, to this day, have problems with implementing the roof. Can, can we place properly? Finally, Jesus Christ. As I was building the roof, I noticed that it wasn't going to work out the way I wanted to make it. So I ended up having to take it down, the progress I had made. I decided I didn't want to burn any more time, so I worked through the night and got the roof pattern to work out. Look at this flick shot. Oh, I wasn't actually expecting to hit that. Just kidding, I'm a pro. Dude, nothing is more cringe when it... I hate building. Sorry, I actually finished the front part, so I continued finishing up the roof until day 108 had come upon us. I started by crafting some oak supports, which gave a little more flavor to the house. I ended up crafting an excess amount, and it was a waste of materials. I think I only ended up using like six pieces, and I tried adding terracotta to the storage room. However, my struggles led to me to quit using it. Dude, why? Why can't you just rotate this shit or something? I don't even know if I want terracotta anymore. It's just too annoying to deal with. Yup, I just let some pieces of terracotta defeat me. Brilliant. I then realized a, a huge mistake with the roof. I didn't add another layer of oak planks, which is where I should have started the roof, and instead put it on the layer where you see the cobblestone is at. So my work on the roof was kind of a waste, and one day I would have to take it down. A blood moon came up that night, so I continued working on the house and decided to use gold ore bricks where the windows were supposed to be. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is the storage room, so I don't want the chest making that weird effect with the glass to where it attaches to it, if you know what I'm talking about. I decided for some time of the night to go into the nether to look for a tree that would give me a nice colored chest color, and eventually I found the Lament tree. To be honest, I don't know how you pronounce it, Lament, Lament, don't care, do not correct me on it. You can correct me when I say turrets wrong. If you don't know, I guess it's become a little meme on the first 100 days, but I kept on saying turrent with an NT instead of turret. I am sorry about that, thank you for correcting me. I apologize if I pronounced this tree wrong too. I ended up liking the color that these planks created when making the chest, so I collected more planks and warp stoned home when I had a sufficient amount. Bro, that literally looks like the, the photo of a black hole. <laughs> Here are the chests in the storage room, and I think it looks pretty good. Afterwards, I would wait for the blood moon to set and the sun to rise. Day 109, I planted some Lamont. Okay, honestly, I'm just gonna go with Lamont for the rest of the 200 days. I planted the Lamont trees because I needed a lot more wood and used bone meal to speed up their growth so I could get going with the process of creating more chests. This is so much wood. I am taking in so much wood. And I think I kind of noticed it here. I don't remember if I entirely did, but when you break these chests, you don't get the chest back, which I think is an absolute scam. Hello? I wanted to put the bamboo I had on my property to use, so I decided I would use the bamboo as the sign color to put onto the chest. I started adding the labels to some of the chests and went out to plant some trees and then almost recreated a sad scene from a childhood movie. Hey, who wants to re recreate Bambi? No, I can't, I can't, I can't even make myself do that. It's too sad. My Canadian blood stops me from committing such a crime. Nighttime came around and I continued collecting more bamboo and labeling more chests and soon after went to sleep. Day 110, I hit this sick 360 no scope on a creeper. All right, come on for the one time. And 
shortly after saw an enderman that looked like it was bred on the lands of Chernobyl. Did you see that enderman? Is it supposed to be like that? Uh-oh. Miss input. People in Chernobyl be like. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just like a mess up one of the resource packs. Started collecting some wheat with my hoe and used the wheat that I collected to breed some of the cows. Shortly after, I continued collecting more crops that I had. Has anyone else seen a hoe this useful? And traded with the villagers with the crops I had just collected. I collected the apples from the apple trees I planted not that long ago and shortly after went to sleep when I was done. Funny how this is how gravity was invented before we were all just floating human beings. Day 111. I started by crafting some golden apples and made a discovery with some of the items I got from the Everbright dimension. Did anybody spawn? Whoa! No way. That is sick. Look, he's got... Oh, he's got a couple inches on me. I wonder where else he's got a little more inches on you. The Giga Chadness is out of this world right now. By the way, his looks fooled me, and you will soon see why. Shortly after, I learned how rice is grown. At least in Minecraft. I don't know if this applies in real life too, but thought it was pretty cool. How is rice grown? I actually don't know this. Like, how do we have so much rice? <gasps> oh, after planting the rice, I planted the Everdon dimension portal in the first floor and soon after went to sleep. Day 112, the day I would step foot into the Everdon dimension. Let's do this. I would quickly be reminded of how tools worked from other dimensions in this world. This tool doesn't work here. Oh my god, I forgot about that bullshit. Okay, I see some foxes on the map. Oh my god, no way. We're taming one. Or maybe they eat these. Crescent fruit. Okay, we just have infinity fruit. <gasps> no way. That's right. I tamed a purple fox first try. Of course, I didn't want my new pet to be in any harm's way. So I brought him through the portal back into my home where I let him sit until I returned. I shortly found the Everdon Blinding Dungeon and began the process that I went through in the Everbright. Oh. All right, do the, do the heavy lifting, man. I forgot to bring any of the materials I had from the Everbright. I think they work better also in the Everdon, but I really needed replacements for my sword in this dimension. As you can see, the damage output it had on the witch was awful. Ah, oh, no, not the venom spider. Okay, I really need to find something. Eat my ass. I got sick of how weak my sword was, so I went back outside to create a basic one in this dimension standards. And here is when I began to see the flaws of spawning in the artificial golem as a friend. He's dying. Oh, how do you spawn out there? Oh my god. I took out the Vindicators quickly and thankfully found a replacement for my sword because even the one I just crafted was pretty weak. Give me an axe. Yes! Oh my gosh, this is actually so good. And here is the boss battle in the Everdon Blinding Dungeon. Enjoy. Uh... Alright, yeah, get the, get the homeboy out. Go to work, go to work. Are we dumb? Oh, I, I can't wait for the goodie bag he gives. It's like Pokemon card unboxing. I actually enjoy it. Maybe get something, a cool arc or something. Okay, that was quite easy. Ow. Alright, let's have a little unboxing. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another Minecraft unboxing. Today, we're looking for a PI Site 10 arc. So, we got a dust arc. Grants invisibility while sneaking. So since I'm a Minecraft veteran, that is complete dog shit. 
as I know it does absolutely nothing. Yeah, overall the loot wasn't that good, but at least we took out the boss. The best thing I got, these unique ingots named Horizonite ingots. I think I said that right, which when making it into a sword basically gives it fire aspect. I don't know why there's a venti- Oh, I forgot about the spike shield. Actually, I need to correct myself. The spike shield was the best loot drop I got from that fight. 100% blocking damage. Looks badass too. Can't ask for more. On my way to the next boss battle, I ran into a village, which I had never discovered in the Everdon, but it was quite empty and nothing significant was there except for this food prep table, which I would never end up using. So I continued on course to the poison dungeon. And there it was, the tree that striked fear into anyone's eyes. This is when I checked what day it was, and it was day 113. Once again, being in any different dimension, it is hard to track time, and I try my best to check what day it is in order to keep it as accurate as possible. I remembered that there was a bunch of spawners in this maze, so I went up real quick to create a pickaxe, and then I went back down to start going to work. All right, here comes Poison Simulator. Here's the start of my demise with what a maze can do to a person's mind. The thing is, it's so pussy, because it's like... Oh my gosh. No way it's going to take this goddamn long. Let me do it. I created a better pickaxe while I was down there, because the one I was using was... Pretty garbage. And just like the Everbright maze place, whatever you want to call it, this place also had four levels where you needed to collect four keys in order to get to the main boss. Please give me the key. Yes! Dude, these maze mazes are literally made to crumble the mind. You think your mind's powerful? Oh yeah? Go through a maze. Alright, let's have the useless goblin. Maybe we'll do something. Nope, you'll die again. After my golem dying within the walls, I found a sword in a chest that was probably the most suitable thing to find while in this spider maze. Okay. Oh, Bane of Arthropods. If I am correct, we are about to one-shot every spider. One shot? Okay. Here was when I checked what day it was, and it became day 114 while I was still in the maze. As you can hear, finding the way down was a luxury, because this is a chopped up footage, but I would be going constantly in circles just trying to find the way down after finding the key on each level. Is that it? Yes! Alright, last level. I found the last key and then made my way to the final boss battle. Before going into battle, I created this drop side sword. I got the gems needed to create the sword while in the maze and it's quite powerful in this dimension standards. And here's some really sh** RP. Morty, you wanna kill a spider bitch? Jeez, Rick! <laughs> I f***ing suck at RPing. Alright, let's do this. Right, I got some bombs for you, bitch. Ah, oh, what the hell? Uh, that did nothing. Oh my. Forgot how much of a horror story this place is. Pussy. Oh god. Oh god, that did a lot of damage. Shit. Oh my god! You do it in this perspective, it's so much cooler. Okay. Jesus. Lord. Help me. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let go of me. Uh oh. I think as well. Yep, there it is. Oh yeah? But watch this. Minions are no match for me. Are they even doing extra damage? I don't even think so. Oh my god, no way. This thing is way better. is here. Accept it. Oh shit, my end is almost near. Let's go! That is disgusting every single time I see it. 
Yeah, I took out the Shelob type beat spider and on my way out, I checked what day it was and it was day 115. On my way out, I finally activated my brain. All right, time to find my way out. Yay. Wait, I have a wart, dude. Just gotta start using my brain more. All right, let's have another unboxing. Give us something good, come on. Increases damage dealt by three when poison. Okay, that would have been useful way earlier. Potion of poison. That's all I got? Pretty disappointing, not gonna lie. Alright, uh, I forgot about the lore. Damn it. Yeah, 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 if you wanna read that. When I was home, I knew I had a very important task at hand, which was naming my purple fox. Bang. Lean. <laughs> Lean the fox, ladies and gentlemen. For the rest of the day, I continued the process of the construction of the storage room and then went to sleep. Day 116, I destroyed the portal that was inside because the noise was annoying me while I was working on the storage room, which I would continue to do for the rest of the day until I went to sleep. All right, I got an energy drink in me. That means we're gonna go off. Twilight Forest is coming next. Well, that statement was complete bullshit because I continued working on transferring the stuff from the old house into the new house. And here is when I finally fully found out that when you break the chest, you get scammed. It looks so bad. Did, wait, do they just disappear? How, how are you supposed to break these? With silk touch? What the fuck? All right, we need a big daddy load. So we're gonna have to take this one. Talking about holding it in for a month and not. <laughs> okay, dude. Moving on from that pogo moment, I continued planting the trees that gave me the resources to create the chest. I added torches on the inside of the house and continued harvesting more bamboo and then witnessed the first ever spider jockey villager edition. What? That can exist? Anything is possible in better Minecraft. A villager skeleton jockey? Wow. Cool. The sun's already coming up. I feel like I haven't even done anything. I didn't even realize it, but I ended up completing tasks for the whole night until day 118 had come upon us. And I would continue the process of clearing out the old house. And here's some lore from high school. Should I blow up this house? We can give meaning to something that doesn't have meaning. Guys, I kid you not, in high school, we once looked at a seven word poem, no, no pun intended, and spent 20 to 30 minutes discussing something that had zero meaning behind it. Welcome to high school, ladies and gentlemen. True story. Not gonna lie. I think the poem, I know it's not seven words, like I said, it was like, the barn is red. So with these poems in class, you would have to get some serious bullshit out of your ass to give a meaning to it because sometimes you would get called upon because who the hell wants to speak up about meaning that isn't there so if i were called for that i'll just say that red represents communist russia and barn represents the wheat that they consumed heavily and here's a little sample from one of the discs i got from i don't even know from where but here it is actually let's try it all right, so this disc is literally just someone pissing. I continued working throughout the night, and I'm pretty sure I did it until the next day. Day 119 came, and I continued the process of moving out and went through some old things while at it. Damn, that looks sick. The battle axe. Whoa! There's now an animation? What the heck? I look you want to use this to look badass now. Too bad it does nine hearts of damage. The reason why I'm so surprised is because when I played Better Minecraft, this axe did not have the animation it has, as you guys can see. So I thought that was pretty cool. I just wish it did more damage. Hold on, I want to I wanna test this thing. The Mirror of Abundance. It duplicates your offhand thing. So if I do this, does that mean I have two swords? Oh! <gasps> What? So I have two OP swords now. <laughs> no way. Thank God I did not use that item with a dirt block. By chance, I used it on the sword I had. And now I had two, which was pretty cool. Dang, that's actually a really good drop. I think I got it from a witch bag for you guys who are wondering how I got it. And it came from the raid. Man, we finally moved out on day 119. What's a journey. However, I do think I'm going to blow it up. Huh, maybe they have the Kim Jong-un mod pack oh uh, no they don't no nukes damn it unfortunately better minecraft does not have the kim jong-un mod but soon we would craft some tnt to blow up the old house shortly after sorting things in the house i went to sleep day 120 i started to collect sand because i needed that in order to create tnt ah dude i should have used the abundant uh, but me 
Mirror of Abundance on a totem of undying. That would have been much smarter. I walked so you guys could run. <laughs> I pissed so you guys could sh there we go. That's a better reference. After making that stupid reference, I created TNT and began to add it throughout the old house. Once I was satisfied with where I placed the TNT within the house, I lit it up and said goodbye to my old house. Goodbye, old home. You will be replaced with something with no meaning. That had a pretty good explosion, eh? Except for that stuff. Look, the cows were not harmed. I f***ed up my sugarcane farm. I think that was a W. I removed some of the remaining blocks on the roof, but I did not completely wipe it out. Glad to have that out of sight now. Cheers to poems with no meanings. Look at that. It's nice to have that out of sight. We get the tree line now. After looking at the tree line, I then went back to get rid of the remaining blocks. However, I didn't realize it now, but right above me was still the fireplace that created the fire effect. But later on, within the 200 days, I would remove it. When night time came, I hunted down creepers because I wanted more gunpowder in order to make more fireworks. Pull up, pull and up. here's how I sum up the music discs that I had. And after, went to sleep. I got a music disc. Packed venue? All right. All right, so these, these songs are just literally some YouTube sound effects. Day 121, I started by breeding the cows and then killing them right after to restock my steak supply. I went through some cycles with the enchantment table as I wanted to create a new bow because the one that I had was going to die soon. She, oh, punch, punch, we'll take that. Punch one. Okay, I think we got our new bow. I'm breaking three, power three, punch one, flame one, and we can combine it. Where's my plug? This is my plug, Elton. Yep, me and Elton go back. After trading with Elton, I went back and combined the bows that I had to create my new powerful one. I know it doesn't have power five now, but I would add it on later. I went back to the nether because I wanted to get my gold supply up. So I pinged a bastion and went back to where the piglins resided. The way that sand people are to Anakin, or the way... I see piglins, so I killed every single one in order to get what I desired. While at it, I also found some decent loot in the chest that they had. Even after I collected the gold that they had in their reserves, I still went out my way to slay them all. When I waystoned home, the sun was beginning to rise. Day 122, I crafted golden apples to start off my day and reminded myself how to create the portal to go into the twilight forest. I went out to collect some poppies because that is a flower that can be used to create this portal. I added water into the center and I waited for the blocks to turn green. I think it's required for them to be grass blocks, not just regular dirt. And I waited quite a long time and it still did not turn into grass. Are you kidding me still? All right, I'm just gonna do what I should have done a while ago. That was exactly what I did. I used silk touch on the grass blocks that were around and replaced them to where they should be on the portal. Afterwards, I would go to sleep and then go into the twilight forest the next day. It's time for the Twilight Forest. Let's do this. Oh, come on. Oop. Oh. Oh, wow. That was the most delayed hit. Wow. Join me on the other side. The Twilight Forest is filled with powerful creatures. You must defeat them in order to progress. For more information, refer to the Twilight Forest wiki. I'm a pro, don't even need to. First is the Naga, and I literally think it spawned right in front of us, so GG's. A Twilight Forest arc would begin, and the Naga would be the first boss I had my eyes upon. Oh, Naga, where is thou? Ah, it's still ahead, it's still scuffed. Gonna speak over the battle, really isn't that significant. It's just a floating head. Twilight Forest is known to have problems with working with Optifine, and you're gonna see a lot of that as I progress throughout the Twilight Forest. So this guy's actually is like kind of like a long schlong, but currently we only see the head. One more. Dead. Oh wait, look tower. Or I can be legit and totally seem like I did not use that and look on the map and see that there is one nearby. Wait, where am I on the map though? Wait, where am I on the map? At? I don't see me. The map ended up being completely useless, so I am so glad I added the Explorer's Compass into better Minecraft, and I would end up making my way to the Like Tower. I don't know if I pronounce it Leich or Like. I guess you guys are the Einsteins here, so correct me in the comments. I slayed every mob that was in my path with ease and destroyed the spawners as I went up the staircase and made my way to the boss where I would begin the battle. Let's do this. Oh, 
shoot. Alright, that was pretty easy. I'll take that though. Oh, can't forget that. Oh. Now the next boss was located in the labyrinth, so I made my way there. Alright, let's enter the labyrinth. There's a lot of disgusting ass beetles as far as I remember, so... Alright, we just gotta find the way down. Ow. Oh god, I forgot about you cucks. Ooh, a maze slime. I don't remember you. What the heck? If you're wondering why I skipped through the chests in this dimension is because the stuff you get from it isn't really good, especially in the labyrinth. Day 124 came around while I was still in the maze. I made my way to the next level within the labyrinth. What a pussy, it runs from you. I never run from battles. I found the location of the boss pretty quickly, and I'll use that word again, but the fight ended quickly. Hello there. No, I killed a bat. I kind of want to see. Do I want to play with how much damage this guy does? No, this guy's just literally a joke. I've never bullied a boss more in my life. Wow. That was kind of sad. I have sit in the chat for Minnow Shroom. Maybe he needs a buff. I had to find my way out of the labyrinth, and eventually I did after some time. Oh, the Hydra. I like this boss battle. Next was the Hydra, indeed. Pinged one eventually on the Explorer's map, and as I was going there, I ran into where the Urgast was located, so I pinged it on the map. And like I said, I do enjoy the Hydra boss battle, but I was met with a surprise. Wow, this is so cool. I'm guessing it's like Ash, because it's like a dragon. Alright, let's kill this guy. My territory now. Really, man? Yup, because of the texture complications, I was met with a chopped off Barney. So the boss did not look intimidating at all. I'm not gonna show the boss battle, because I mean, it's just pretty sad to watch as I'm shooting arrows at nothing. But if you do want to see the Hydra boss battle, you can check out my Better Minecraft episode on the Twilight Forest after watching this, if you care so. It took much longer because the way you take out the Hydra is you shoot the fireballs it shoots out as it comes out of its mouth and you try and deflect it back to where the head is located. So doing it was quite challenging since his body was chopped in half, but eventually I was successful and took out the Hydra. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Luda gives his fiery blood, which can be used to create armor, but obviously not better than netherite, and hydra chops, which are OP pieces of steak. After the battle, I checked what day it was, and it was day 125, and next was the night phantom. I got to the location, and in order to open the trap door, you must place one of the trophy heads on this pedestal. Alright, so we just need to find the room, which, as you can see on the map, uh, can be a pain in the ass. And that's exactly what it was, a pain in the ass. There was constant onslaughts of mob spawning. They're not that powerful, but having ads constantly can be annoying. And the loot here is not really that rewarding at all, as the stuff you'll find is much weaker if you're in the same position as me. I'm getting hopeless. Day 126. Why do I- I feel like I- I, I don't know if I've seen these rooms. Already been here, man. Yep, you can hear it in my voice. This is obviously cut footage, but I was trying to find the location of the boss battle for so damn long. I saw the location of the boss battle on my map, and I tried getting there the quote-unquote legit way, but I had enough, and I just dug right through the wall. I mean, what's stopping me from going through here? Let's be real. Some obsidian that we can easily break. They really trying to gatekeep us. All right, we found the entrance. Look, wow. Wow, we did it. All right, let's do this. <sighs> Awaken the dead. Don't worry, I'll put you to sleep real quick. Yep, that's the fight. Pretty easy. And that, that's it. Another pretty easy boss battle. And like I said, the loot isn't that rewarding if you have the loot that I have. See, this is all cool stuff. It just sucks, though. Instead of going through the maze mine blunder, I just dug stairs to get out of there. Now, the Urgast was next in line. So we could cheese it to the top, 
by just obviously flying up there. However, I do want to show you what it's like, the entrance and stuff. It's very cool how the doors will work. Look at this. <sighs> Come on, aren't you amazed? Look at this. Like some Star Wars shit with the doors. This place is absolutely action-packed. There were tons of mobs, parkour. So just sit back and enjoy. No, the bat died. I hate when bats die in Minecraft, man. Carmen, I go on. You guys are weak. Can I block it? Oh, I can. What is that gas? I don't remember that. Ooh, specter arrows are being put to use now. <gasps> oh my god, I caught myself. Ooh. Finally gave in to my ambition to progress and made a strategic play. Not cheating though. Oh my god, we have a long way to go. Alright, let's make a strategic play. How about that? Whoa. And because of this play, I don't think I've ever been more debated in my life. This is a bomb? gonna explode. Wait, what? What the fuck? What is going on? Wow, the definition of getting baited. At the time, I didn't see that the name was False Diamond and False Gold, but yep, that is what happens when you activate that mechanism. Eventually, I made my way to the top, and now it was time for the year gas battle. Enjoy. No, wait, I didn't mean- Let me piss. Okay, I think I remember how to do this. Shoot on me, pussy. Oh, oh that- that's dumb. Jesus, I do nothing. There we go. Come on. No, I f Oh my god. What's this? No. Pressure plate. Now. Come here, pussy. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. What? It didn't work. There we go. Come on. How are you not close enough? No. Come on. Yes! Get out of here. I successfully defeated the Urgast and instantly claimed the rewards it gives you. I also got the trophy, which spawns in a chest after you kill the Urgast. The next boss that had a bounty on its head would be the Alpha Yeti. Look at this. Jesus Christ, there are so many. I don't think they're that OP. Oh. oh okay, I definitely remember that. Alright, let's just spawn the big boy. All right. Oh God. Dude, the testosterone levels on these bosses are insane. I may have to make a tier list video on each one. That was literally one of the easiest fights I've ever had. After easily taking out the Alpha Yeti, the Snow Queen was next. Before I got to the location though, I found my own kind. Look at them. Forgot how small they were. Dude, I wish I could bring one home, man. Alright, I think we're coming up. Yep, there it is on the map. The Snow Queen's place. Where are the mobs? 
I'm not complaining, but normally there's a lot more. I feel a disturbance in the force. Here's some footage of the mobs that are inside of this castle. I think that's what it is. Overall, the loot isn't that good, except for a sword that I will find later on. Day 128 came while I was still in the castle, and I continued taking out the soft Twitter user- I mean, snowflakes, and found the sword that I was just talking about. Oh! <gasps> Because I'm a pro, I am not going to get as crazy excited over the sword because you know why? It has one hit only. I learned that the hard way the last time I was here. <laughs> that is true. I did find out the hard way and I originally discovered the purpose of the sword by just using it on one of the regular mobs within the castle. As time went on, I eventually found where the Snow Queen was at. Oh, we found the fight. Oh, I, she's at, last time she didn't have any structures though because it was scuffed. Nice. And she is flying. What the hell? I'm not supposed to hit her. She is squirting everywhere. What the hell? Damn, they like buffed her. This is way different than last time. She, she does have one advantage. She has the high ground. Obi-Wan taught her well. Let's go. Although she did get a buff, I did take her out with ease. The next task was to find the land where the giants resided. Or actually, the clouds where they resided in. But before I got there, I encountered a mob I'd never seen before in the Twilight Forest. Wait, what's that on the map? What the hell is that? Sounds like a low fart. Okay, now it sounds more like a ghost. I found the Cloud City and was met with a bunch of giant imposters of myself. And there is giant me. <laughs> oh my god. Some real imposter sh here. I took out multiple giants and afterwards found a cavern where pillagers were hiding inside of. What have I just found? I felt obligated to take him out because I was in search of an evoker so I could restock on my totem of undyings, but as time went on, I realized that there was no evoker inside, so I left. Day 129 came while still in the twilight forest, and we were on to the last task. I needed to find the holy ram inside of a rainbow forest, and here is me discovering the rainbow forest. Because of Optifine, I believe these leaves are messed up. They're supposed to be rainbow colored, but what you see is the messed up version. We found the holy ram. I think we have. Oh my. Time to get every die. That is right. The last task is to get every single colored wool and apply it on thy holy ram. There were some on site of the locations, so I gave those pieces of wool to the holy ram. I added a waystone to the holy location, and I went home and straight away went to go collect sugarcane, turned that into paper to create more fireworks, and then went to sleep. Well, day 130, I started the process of collecting every die possible, and to speed up the process, I pinged a flower bomb but on my way there, I found some wild Nagas. <gasps> what is that? Oh my god. This is a side quest of the century. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's like a Pokemon. How it dodges. Oh my god, there's more. Blocked? Nope. Poison too? Yikes. Nah, 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 dude. I think I'm gonna have to do more research before I take them out. We'll call these the Forbidden Islands. One day I would return to the site in order to take him out. Hey, we haven't really taken over a pirate ship. This one's for Johnny Depp. How about that? As I'm recording this voiceover, it is currently May 28th, so the Johnny Depp verdict will be made any day now, and I can confidently say if Johnny Depp does not win this case, the justice system is f***. I've been following the court case since the beginning, and it is absolutely shameless the amount of lying by Amber Heard. Johnny Depp was literally running a homeless shelter for her friends, and then they all turn against him with this big lie. Like when I'm reading on Twitter the hashtag I stand with Amber Heard, I lose more brain cells than people talking about Flat Earth. Flat Earth is more f 
believable than her. And you guys know my take on Flat Earth Theory. Anyways, I can't wait to see Johnny get his career back because growing up, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise was a huge part of my childhood. And to see someone who played a huge part in my childhood to have his career taken away because of some fake ass lies, it's sad to see. Sorry, I just wanted to share my thoughts on this case. We stand by Johnny Depp here ladies and gentlemen. After taking out the pirate scum that was aboard, I got to the flower island and collected some different dyes. Unfortunately, I got Bad Omen back in that cavern in the Twilight Forest and I had no idea it would trigger a raid when you got close to a Blue Skies villager home, but I still went to sleep. Are we really that much of pussies? I was not about to deal with another raid. Anyways, I got back to my task and started collecting more flowers and combining them to make different colors of dye. On my way back home, I ran into this giant structure, which I marked on the map to return to one day. For the rest of the day, I continued working on collecting all the dyes and then went to sleep. Day 132, I continued collecting different dyes, making different combinations, and started adding the colors to white wool. I did some farming tasks throughout the day, and removed these vertical slabs that were on my house. I felt like it took away from the cobblestone color, and there was too much of a presence of oak planks throughout the house. Let's go! A harvest moon did rise to the sky that night, and through this time lapse, I didn't really notice a big difference, but oh well. Alright, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't think much changed. I did some mob hunting throughout the night. I wanted to stay up so the harvestman could have its full effect on my crops. Nice. I did almost go to sleep, but then I did remember that it was a harvest moon night. Also, here's some very trash acting as I tried to replicate Batman. Batman. Bro, this is giving me heavy Batman vibes right now. I don't like using that word a lot. All right, let me, let me do some Batman right here. Some Batman RP. You think I'm hiding in the shadows, but I am the shadows. Imagine if thunder struck right behind me, that would've been so badass. It's just not gonna strike, isn't it? Ooh, but I am the shadow. <laughs> Day 133, the harvest moon would set and I created some XP tomes to store the XP that I had. I went to the Holy Ram location and started adding the wool onto its body, but I did forget some. All right, Holy Ram, I give you gray. Wait, that was black, gray, pink, white, blue, orange, white, I said white. Did I already give white? Black. Brown. Green. I said green. I already gave you that, damn it. Magenta. Red. And last but not least, blue. What am I missing? I knew that would happen. It was a cyan. Come on. That was it, no? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15! Are you mad? You're killing me with these levels. Throwing them out there like dollar bills in a strip club. Purple's the last one. Okay, nice. Big perp! Thy holy ram. Alright, it is time. <sighs> oh, oh. I forgot about that part. He like shits out loot. Nice. We did it! We completed the Twilight Forest! Alright, time to come home. And now you are to be latched right there. We completed the Twilight Forest pretty fast. Not bad. So, the Twilight Forest has been completed on day 133. That is right. On day 133, the Twilight Forest arc would come to a close, but I would return one day for a special item. More on that later. I went to the enchantment table because I wanted on Breaking 3, and I spent through a lot of levels before I actually got it. Afterwards, I would go to sleep. Day 134, I moved the waystone closer to my house because I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. I went to Elton to get mending from him. All right, Elton. Damn, we're raising the prices. All right, all right. Get it, inflation is still going on. Combined on breaking three and mending to add it to the spike shield, so the shield would have immortality. It didn't take long for me to return to the Twilight Forest, so I guess you could say the arc has now reopened itself. I went back to the Like Tower because I was in search of the Peacock Fan. If you don't know what this is, basically, I won't need fireworks anymore. It would solve the issue of constantly having to replace them. I did not find it in the Like Tower, and the other location I I could find it was in a hollow hill, so that is where I headed to next. When I got there, I was met with a lot of resistance. All right, already I'm already getting shot at. Brilliant. Some gnomes, tiny ass spiders. 
We gotta break the spawners. Peacock fan, please. Yes! Oh my god! Worth it. Alright, do I do I slay the rest of them like Anakin did with the younglings? Day 135 came when I was still in the Twilight Forest, and then I finally remembered that I could warp stone home, which is what I did, and I went straight to the enchantment table to get to enchants to apply to the peacock fan. Didn't get what I wanted, and I upgraded my bow and found out how much it costed to add power six. We'll be rich. How about that, eh? Holy sh! 30 levels? I was now getting set up for a boss that was in the end still that I had to take out. So I started collecting sand and gunpowder for the rest of the day. Ooh, sideways fish man. The slab fish. A136, nice. I would check on my rice and harvest it. Okay, I got a rice panicle. Now what do you do with this? Now what can you do with the rice? You make pancakes? Is that how you make rice? Wait. Is that how you make pancakes? I continued collecting sand and all I needed was more gunpowder. So I sped up to nighttime and took out as many creepers as possible until the next day. Day 137, I crafted the TNT that I needed and made my way back to the end. Here is some lore. A little lore on the shelter. When I was searching for him, I never got to find him because when I was playing better Minecraft, there was a dumb bug that didn't even let the structure render in. Came upon the structure in the end as I searched for the shelterer and the loot was phenomenal. This was basically an ancient tome generator. Okay, this is just asking to spawn a freaking wither. Dealing with a nuclear weapon right here, eh? I continued on in my adventure and stumbled upon, I think you can call it a shulker outpost, I'm not sure, and inside of it was also pretty good loot. I ran into these mobs called the entombed and they spawn right by a structure i think it's like a tomb and inside of it is also some good loot now there's a huge time difference between the footage now and what is coming next all right it's been like two weeks since the last time i played not even gonna lie college things but day 138 and we're still on the hunt for boss that you kill with tnt yeah so we've had absolutely zero luck as you can see with how far we've traveled finding this dumbass boss but we just gotta continue on yeah a lot of time in between the recordings but after that recap i found this house inside of it there's nothing significant except an ender chest that's about it and after flying for so long i found where the shelter was at wait is this it oh <gasps> yes we found it! Wait, did we? Yes, yes, oh my god, we did. It only took 10 light years to get there. I wonder what this boss does, though. Will it shit on my bed? Boy, do I know someone who would. What the heck? Is that like some drone? Inside of the structure, there are little jump pads that let you float, which were pretty cool, and I easily broke the spawners. Now, here is me struggling, trying to find out how the boss battle starts. Don't worry, I eventually got it to start. All right, so how do, how do we do this? There's no boss here, though. I thought some, someone's supposed to be here. Hello? Bro, what do I use? Another star, maybe? Ah... All right, well, how does he look like? Oh, it's the Eye of Sauron. Travel 10 light years just for this fight. Can't even put cool background music in the background. Yeah, baby. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh God. It's so oh, what the heck? All right, this guy doesn't play around. Although the shelterer lacked HP, that thing packs a hit. I can say goodbye to the end permanently. That is right. The quest line for the end was 100% complete. It was day 139 when I warp stoned home and I created this teleporter core. I have no idea what it does. One of you lore enthusiasts probably know, so I'd appreciate it if you let me know. I found out that you can actually put the shulker shell on as a helmet, so thought it was pretty cool. I wish it was more 
OP. I then discovered a downside of the homemade totem. You cannot put it on as a necklace. In order for it to work, you would have to put it on your offhand. Thankfully, within this 200 days, I would update my game and the homemade totem would be removed. I finally completely eliminated the old house by taking out the fireplace that was upstairs and I went to the nether praying that I would just find the nether keeper. I traveled so far and while doing so, I ran into a temple where there was a lot of good loot inside of it and here is me molding. Dude, I am convinced the rendering in is broken. This doesn't make sense. I've traveled in every direction, and yet I still can't find a bloody crimson forest or nether waste. Not, not even the structure itself, just the biome. There's no way these things exist. It's an imaginary lie to just make the player go in circles. I'd make a little stop where this respawner statue was at, and this was where I updated my game to version 56 on 1.16.5. In the past, when I did update my game, the quest line would be completely wiped of its memory. Thankfully, that did not happen here. All right, I upgraded to version 56. All I care about if our my quests are still there. Thank God, oh my gosh. I opened my game in hopes that it would fix the rendering in, but you'll soon find out if that even worked. Also, the quest lines got readjusted, so I was able to reclaim some of them and got a totem of undying, so that was pretty good. I just realized I wasn't recording. Yes, did I, did I find the biome? Oh, you guess no? How'd you know? A lot of time was passing by, and I continued traveling throughout day 140. Didn't find anything. My god, bro. Day 141 came around and I found uh, another bastion, so I took the gold of course and continued on with my adventure. I swear if I see one more bastion before I find this biome, I'm, I'm going back. And this boss is considered dead. This is bull****. Well, that was a bastion, so you know what that means. I kept my word. This boss is considered dead. There is no way I can find it after hours of flying. I warp stoned home, and it was day 142. I added the two respawn statues to the front of my house, because I thought it would look good, and that's exactly what it came out to be. I got my Skulka Finder from its chest, and made my way to the bedrock level, but before heading back into the Warden Dimension, I went to sleep. Day 143, I would return to the Warden Dimension. All I needed to do was take out one more variant of a warden, I believe it was the big warden, in order to complete the quest line for the warden dimension. So that is exactly what I achieved. I of course took the easy way, cheese the warden, and officially completed the warden dimension quest line. Yes! I used the depot dark chest, I believe that's what it's called, to get back home. And when I got back home, I went through the updated quest lines to reclaim some rewards. One of the new items in the quest line was this golem steel brazier, and I instantly wanted to find out what it did, so I tested it out in the villager hideout, but I couldn't get it to work. One of you guys probably knows how to get it to work. I'm assuming maybe you right-click the villager, but I'm not sure. I went spider hunting for some of the night, and then went to sleep. Day 144, with the string I collected in the previous night, I started the process of upgrading my backpack to give it some more storage. After completing Completing the upgrade on my backpack, I would dig nearby to find a place to where I could take out the wither, but I was met with mobs, so I dealt with them and then went to sleep. Day 145, I would take on the wither. Alright, let's make this sweet and short, how about that? Alright, do your blow up thing. Have an issue. Oh, keep them in here, keep them in here, or it's over. Come on. There we go. We kept them to a grenade level explosion. Thank God he didn't turn into a nuke. Allow me to flex my levels. Boom. After flexing my levels and adding power six to my bow, I believe this is a reference to Palpatine from Revenge of the Sith, if I am not wrong. And I did some enchants on the enchantment table, and for some time, the enchantment table has been cucking me because it wasn't even fully leveled oh, up, and now. I finally realized it. Wait, it's not fully enchanted. 
What the hell? I fixed the problem, and I spent a lot more levels to get Unbreaking 3 again. I went back to Elton to get Mending, and added Unbreaking 3 and Mending together to add it to the Peacock fan. Afterwards, I would go to sleep. Now the last dimension that is left on the quest line was the abyss. So I made the portal behind my house. Oh, 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 here goes nothing on day 146. This place is just amazing. You are entering the world of what is not considered vanilla plus. With you conquering the end, here is something new and refreshing to experience. Since the last time, this dimension has gone through a whole renovation, so a lot of things were new to me. Previously, the last time I played, I had basically the same armor, and I barely took any damage in the abyss, but now, that was different. What the hell? Oh, oh, they actually do a lot of damage. Alright, Jesus Christ. What the f- Wow. Wow, okay, okay. Oh, my armor is shit here. Here is where I got slime, and as soon as you get in the abyss, you want to start collecting this. More on that later, though. Why is my screen getting covered more and more? I can't tell if it's spreading more. Once again, there were new features in the abyss. I discovered what this was later on, but the stuff you see on the screen represents your sickness while inside of the abyss. You need to create an essence in order to combat it, but I wouldn't find that out until later on. Hold on, let me go back, and then it fades? I feel like a sickness? I would return back to the abyss and discover new mobs as I was in there. Bro, don't make me feel bad for killing it when it sounds like a wolf. Damn it. Now I'm just gonna cut out the music here. As you are in the abyss, another feature is that you will be striked with fear and the screen goes black, but that's not it. It would begin to play this theme that I have always wanted to use in a video, but it would get copyrighted. And it's the theme to Stranger Things. When a Demogorgon appears, I, I believe it's a theme song for it. Like it goes down, 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 like a banjo, but like on crack or something. That would constantly be playing throughout my time in the abyss, but I'm just gonna cut it out just to be safe to not get copyrighted. I continued exploring the abyss and found this villager home which had a somnium extractor so I took that. Then I found this structure. It has a bunch of chests throughout it but it is pure bait. There is nothing inside of it. And here was when I discovered what happens when you let the sickness spread for too long. Who is hitting me? Oh sh I'm gonna die aren't I? Let me go home. While the sickness has a hold on you, you cannot warp stone home. Thankfully, I had golden apples on me, which I would consume to regen my health. And I did this until I reached my portal to get back home, to heal from the sickness. Ah, oh, man. All right, time to look at the wiki. Yay. When I got back home, I found out it was already day 147. I did some reading with the book you were provided with for the abyss, and I went back into the abyss, ran into some mobs. I'm not sure what I was exactly doing, but I think I was just exploring, scoping out the area. Oh my god. I returned back home and then went to sleep. Day 148, I upgraded my knowledge of the abyss and started to mine in search of the precious ores the dimension had to offer. I'd basically collect any ore that came in my way, but the main one I was looking for was in Korith. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it correctly, but I'm just gonna go with that. I did some strip mining for some time and did find some in Korith. However, before I got too sick, I went back home to reset my sickness. And when I returned, I almost died. Oh my God, it's a lot of mobs. After that close call, I continued strip mining and collected every ore that came in my path. There was a lot of iron, diamond, and gold that spawns within the abyss. However, I would pass on that. While all strip mining, I also found the ice portal, which is a dimension within the abyss, I guess you could say that. But it doesn't really have anything interesting. As I was mining, I got a little greedy and started uh, to take damage. Fast. Fuck. Thankfully, I was able to get back home, and when I checked what day it was, it was day 149. Started crafting different things that come from the abyss, and then returned to continue strip mining to find more ore. Okay, I'm not going to risk it. I warped stone home before I would start taking damage this time. When I got to the crafting table at my house, I created a research table, and I created a Lorraine Energy, which is one of the most vital pieces to progress in this mod pack. Holy shit, the more you learn, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. 
Okay, wait, we're making advancements. After making some technological advancements, I went to sleep. Day 150. I started crafting some things that would result in the Somnium Infuser, which is basically the equivalent to a brewing stand, but for Abyss items. And I started to craft what would become a game changer to our progression. I made the anti-infection essence and can now spend longer periods of time within the Abyss. I continued strip mining and then drank the essence some time after. I found a bunch more ore, but I still had some time of immunity, so I went out to try and hunt the elder but i just could not ping down where he was at as i was searching for the elder i did some other mob hunting if i'm gonna see an elder i should see it here nope there's no way i just spent all this time and i can't find a dumbass elder after basically searching for 10 minutes, I could not find the elder, so decided to warp stone home and started working towards creating slime fusion. When I got back though, it was also day 151, so it was quite short. I did a few tasks and then went to sleep. Day 152, I collected some wheat and bred the cows because I needed to restock on my steak supply. I went enchanted fish hunting because my armor's durability in the abyss is pretty trash, so I had to heal the damage parts. Continued doing some crop collecting and then traded with the villagers to gain more XP to heal my armor. Throughout some of the nights, I continued to do mob hunting and then went to sleep. Day 153, I started by eliminating some chickens because I needed feathers. I'm sorry, lads. No! I'm going to hell for that one. I crafted some arrows and I went back to the abyss to do more strip mining to find as much in Korith ore I could find. Sometimes you would go on hot runs and find a lot nearby, but... There was also some times where there would be long droughts before I'd find another piece. After mining for some time, I discovered a jungle melon, which is basically a watermelon injected with crack. Oh, whoa. Okay, there's me regen too, and I think that's feather falling. I was hunting for an elder, but instead I found a roca, which I went to take out. Ah, all right, well, this seems like an easy farm to kill. Or not. Thank god. Hiroka drops a very vital piece for the final boss battle in the abyss, but you'll find more about that later on. Day 154 came while I was still in the abyss, and I finally found an elder. I have this part muted because it plays that Stranger Things copyright theme, just as a heads up. This is better. Thank God. And give me that vital piece. After a long day in the abyss, I warped stone home and went to sleep afterwards. All right, we are back on day 155. I know a good combo now is we go mining for 10 minutes and then 10 minutes collect the slime that we need. It is exactly what I would start to do. But before that, I went enchanted fish hunting in order to once again heal my armor. And afterwards, then I went through with my plan and continued strip mining inside of the abyss. Day 156 came around while I was still mining and once I reached somewhat near the halfway points of my immunity I hunted down a slime spider so that I could continue collecting more weird slime. I hunted slime spiders until my immunity was out and then I returned home to go to sleep. Day 157 I crafted some stable slime and an Encorite chest plate. I then collected some crops and traded with the villagers. I did not have a villager who traded carrots yet, so I made some composters so that I would eventually get a villager who did trade carrots for emeralds. Traded some carrots with the villager who acquired that job and then headed to the abyss to continue mining. Day 158 came around while still mining and once I was done with that, I went back up to eliminate more slime spiders for their weird slime. I did that until my immunity ran out and I went back home to find that a blood moon had gone up that night. I'm going back and I'm going to sleep. And I am not going to sleep because it's a blood moon. Even after grinding so much weird slime, you can see how much time it takes in order to reach slime fusion. At this point, I still did not have enough materials in order to create slime fusion, but we were getting close 
to reaching that point. Because it was a blood moon, I couldn't go to sleep, so I wanted to be productive, and I grinded out levels by killing mobs. Sometime within the night, I went to the end to grind levels, because I believe Endermen give you a lot more than just the regular mobs that are in the overworld. And while doing this, day 159 came around while I was still in the end and hunting Endermen. I was in the end for quite some time, and when I warped someone home, the sun was already setting, but I decided I'd work through the night inside of the abyss and continued hunting down slime spiders for their materials. While I was doing this, it started to rain, which was an absolute W. The rain makes the end spiders go away, which is another mob that spawns where the weird slime spawn, so they're very obnoxious, especially since they don't drop what the slime spider does, so I took advantage of that and hunted down a lot of slime spiders. Day 160 came around while I was still in the abyss. This is when I checked. I don't know exactly when it did become day 160, but I crafted some stable slime and I had an abundant amount, so I decided to head home where it was already nighttime. So I went to sleep. Day 161, after hours of grinding, I was now able to make the most OP armor in this game. Not all of it, but two pieces. I had an abundant supply of netherite, so I made more netherite armor, because if I were to fuse the one I had currently, it would take away the enchants that was on my netherite armor, and I did not want to do that. We get a strength buff. Alright, so this is how I look like currently. Oh my god, this is way stronger. After making the Encorite armor, I made a sword, which was named the Encorite MK1, or I, I'm not sure what that is at the end. And with this, you can make a very powerful sword. Oh my goodness. This doesn't seem fair. After making that OP sword, I crafted some netherites and encorite boots, fused those together, and now I had two pieces of the most OP armor in this game. All right, so wait, this is how we look like now, and then adding this. Oh my, we are getting pretty powerful. I decided to take the enchants out of the chest plates I had currently because it didn't really cost much and I added it to the Encorite fused chest plate. I created a netherite helmet for later on when I had some more slime fusion and I created more anti-infection essence. For the rest of the day, I did some farming tasks by collecting wheat, having the cows breed, and I restocked on my steak supply. After a very productive day, I went to sleep. Day 162, I continued my onslaughts on the slime spiders and reminisced on some old things of better Minecraft. Plus we have strength and we barely take any damage anymore. Oh my gosh, this is feeling like the Iron Golem armor. Real OGs will know what I'm talking about. Ooh, first time. I didn't pop an essence this time because I didn't find it necessary, so I went back to the overworld to reset the sickness. Before I headed back in though, I turned the weird slime into unstable slime. When I got back into the abyss, I went through the same process, got home at nighttime and killed enchanted fish to heal my armor, made some more stable slime, and then went to sleep. Day 163, the last day I would hunt down slime spiders. After getting enough weird slime, I headed home and crafted slime fusion so I can make the rest of the armor set. Nice. After going through the same process by creating new netherite armor and infusing it with the Encorite armor, I finally had a full set of Encorite armor fused with netherite. Oh my god, after days of grinding, we have full Encorite armor. And oh my god, isn't it OP? Jeez. Okay, so what's the best way to get levels? Allow me to reintroduce you to the awful ghast in the nether. I went back to the nether because I was curious if I could reignite the awful ghast boss battle because when I defeated him, I got like 54 levels. So I thought this was quite an easy way to farm levels. Here is the result. Do we activate it again? There's only one way to find out. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Give me those levels, baby. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's so broken. It's not broken. It is not broken. It is not broken. Do not remove it from the game. I did not say it was broken. Anyways, after defeating the awful guest, I headed back home and enchanted the OP sword that I had and got sharpness 4 on it. Then, I went to sleep. 
Day 164, I went to the villager hideout and got mending from Elton. I noticed that their population stopped growing, so I went to the nearby camp to collect some wool, created more beds, and placed them in the villager hideout so they could multiply their numbers. Looks like there's gonna be a lot more beds creaking, if you know what I'm saying. Because I was rich with levels, I took the enchants from my netherite leggings and added them to my OP leggings. I did the same thing with my boots, but I needed to gain a few more levels before I could add them to the Encorite boots. 18. I mean, I'm down to kill another guest. Now we know a good cheese thing to do. Actually, no, it's not cheesing at all. It's totally a legit way to progress in this game. 100%, this is gonna get patched. I'm, I'm calling it now. Turn it back. Yeah, baby. What a fight, eh? Eat this. Wait, the money. Hello? And you're dead. No, it burns him up. One more? Yeah, why not? There we go. Alright, I think we're set. After defeating the awful guest twice, I headed back home and added the enchants to my Encorite boots. Afterwards, I went to sleep. Day 165, I actually ran out of books, so I collected some sugar cane, turned that into paper, and made some more books. I then said goodbye to the monstrous helm. Alright, see how much it costs to remove the helmet. Uh, just another kidney, no problem. Alright. We officially have the most OP armor in this game with max enchants. Yeah, you can argue about getting protection 5. Who cares? I did my regular routine of hunting enchanted fish and just so I don't have to repeat myself anymore, just assume I do this on a constant basis. Doesn't mean I do it every day, but I just don't want to annoy you guys that I do this a lot. I went back to the abyss to get some Blaru logs because I needed them to create the arcane workbench where you can create rings of power. I did some research on some of the powers the ring set to offer. So I feel like the purple ones are the best ones. So let's fly all near entities upwards. Okay, so use the force. You'll have an out of body experience. What is it, ripping a bong? Return the abyss and I took out a crystal golem. I know it doesn't count on the quest line, but I wanted to get ahead of myself and get its vital piece that is required later on. Now here is me collecting a node crystal. I was in search of ender and hollow crystals. I thought with the node shards you can turn it into ender crystal. I find out later where you actually found the ender crystal. But anyways, I won't sidetrack. I ended up flying a little bit and ran into these floating islands and inside of them they had hollow crystals, which I collected. I collected some crystals for some time, headed back home where it was already day 166. On the research table, I looked more into the crystals I had just collected. You need to do this in order to cut them on the stone cutter, so it is a very vital part of the process in order to eventually create a ring you want to make. With that being said, I shortly after created the crystal cutter, which will be used later on. I went back into the abyss in search of the ender crystal, still unaware as to where to find it. I was unsuccessful because you don't find it there, and when I got home, I used the crystal cutter. I learned that you're not always guaranteed to get a crystal to turn into a shard successfully, as some break in the process while doing so. I just ate that one. Hello? I think it's based on chance, actually. After learning about the crystal cutter, I went to sleep. Day 167. I guess just start out by hearing my commentary. Unfortunately, I have no idea if there's if you need to spawn the man. Here I am referencing the magician. Could honestly ask in a Discord server. I think that would be the smarter thing to do to possibly save time. And yes, it would have been much smarter if I asked in the Discord. I didn't do that, unfortunately, because I thought I would eventually find the magician. But as I was in search of the magician, I found this very cool structure in the abyss. What is this place? I found a side room which had an infected zombie spawner, which gave a little teaser as to what loot I was about to get throughout this structure. <gasps> The rain ingots goes deeper. With the footage you're seeing, the loot is absolutely phenomenal. The thing I want you to pay most attention to as to what I found in the chest was the amulet of Nasaj. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is OP. Overall, this is an absolute S tier place of loot. And I continued finding great things, repeats of some of the things I already found. And eventually left because my main task was to find the magician. Oh, magician, I got some tricks up my sleeve. I would say ass two of that gets you out from your hiding. When I got home, I was met with pillagers, but I did not provoke them, and 
I just continued on to go to sleep. A169, 169, 69. Yeah, I know you guys like that. Here are some news that I found out. Good news. I know how to find the magician. Bad news. It has to rain. Unfortunately, I am not a Greek god who has a chiseled 90 degree jawline, so I cannot control the weather. I guess our best course of action is perhaps taking naps. And bad news, I still don't know how to find the under crystal. I'm still waiting a response on the Discord. So for that news report, I found out that the Titan bones, when you have them in your inventory, they give you bad luck too. So when I found out about that, I made sure to never have them in my inventory again. And I created more anti-infection essence. Throughout the day, I did more farming tasks, bred the cows and the chickens, traded with some villagers, and I found out about the Oblivion Stone. It will make its cameo later on. Okay, literally, as I'm speaking, I was just told I can find an uh, Ender Crystal in the end. And that does make sense, so... I'm going there right now, because, well, it is the end, so, like, why the hell could I not find a crystal here? Oh my gosh, this whole time it was just right here and I was searching for, I wouldn't say necessarily, actually if you add it up, maybe hours. So here's my line of reasoning as to why I didn't go to the end to search for the ender crystal. I just thought that everything, a part of the abyss dimension, belongs only in that dimension. I was wrong. I'm glad I asked in the discord because I would have never thought an abyss item would be in the end. I'm glad I did find that information out. So I collected some ender crystals. I went back home to research the crystal and I used the cutter to get some shards. I went back to the abyss because I didn't have enough hollow shards, so I collected a few just to play it safe. F oh, oh, I have fire rose forever for dude. Find this if you can. It's too broken. No, it's not broken. Keep it in the game. Sorry. I I <clears throat> choked on my words. Misspoke. Just stuttered. When I got home, I used the crystal cutter to get enough hollow shards and finally made the ring. Oh. <laughs> very powerful thing in my hand. I went out to go test out its power, but through my error, I found out the purpose of the bottle of Somnium. Oh, wait. That's my energy. We got three creepers. Let's do this. 100% <laughs> worth it. Damn right, that was 100% worth it. After testing the ring out, I went to sleep. A171, I would start risking time by sleeping on the hammock to speed up time because the only thing that was in my way was finding the magician, so I needed it to rain. After waiting for some time, hoping that it would rain and I wouldn't unintentionally skip over it, I decided to go to sleep. A172, I would once again start my day off by sleeping in the hammock to speed up to nighttime. Unfortunately, it did not rain. I demand you to give me your soul. And I went back into the abyss to search for soul guards because I needed a few more soul hearts i believe is that item which you need to activate the nightblade boss battle after eliminating some soul guards and then ran into these raptors i don't know why but i think their sound effect sounds very cool so here's this little battle bunch of pussy raptors after taking on those little dinosaurs, I then ran into the big dinosaur and would use this altercation to show my power. Okay. It's not even damaging me. <laughs> I'm more powerful than you could ever imagine to be. After taking out the abyssosaur, I went home and went to sleep. Or maybe because of the seasons, does it have an effect on whether it rains or not? A173, I started to get skeptical because there are seasons involved with this mod pack and I was starting to think maybe it had an effect on whether or not it would rain. So I found out how to create the season sensor. I went out to get the materials for it and I crafted the thing. Season is correct when I place it. I just totally forgot how it works. I'll find out later on. Though so because I was just waiting on the rain, I used my time to start removing the roof on my house. Because if you don't remember what I mentioned earlier, I still needed to add another layer of wood planks in order for it to be matching the pattern of the house. All right, enough is enough. Which god's dick do I need to suck in order for it to rain? I'm mad. Yes, I was getting very irritated, but I did not resort to the gua gua thing. So throughout the night, I used my time to continue building my house. I ran out of planks midway, so I went out to collect more and continued on with the roof. Do I go here too? 
don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. Sorry, man. All the Obi-Wan quotes are in my head. Obi-Wan show, man. I cannot wait for it. This is where the fun begins. Who would have thought the weather would have me by the balls on this adventure? I cannot reiterate my excitement for the series. Free promo. Don't care. I really hope it comes out to be what I hope it will come out to be, if you know what I'm saying. I continued building throughout the whole night, and when day 174 came around, I still continued on the construction of the roof. Got the roof done. All right. Roof reveal. I swear that phrase is some shit out of HGTV. Some of you guys may not even know what that is. I do because it is a good old core memory of days I would act sick so I couldn't go to school. I don't know why during school time the shows that were live sucked ass. So sometimes I would resort to HGTV. I'd be surprised if your parents haven't watched this but it's basically a show of house construction. After acting sick and having to watch that I made sure not to act anymore and I would start going to school more because damn that shit is boring. Throughout the day and night, I continued working on the construction of the house. One, two, three. That is the most unsatisfying thing to happen. After that unsatisfying part, I went to sleep. In my opinion, they should just make everything optional. Because the fact that I'm just waiting on it to rain just for one bloody boss, this is going to kill me for life. The fact that I'll never be able to complete that. After giving that base to take, I continued working on the house. I had to resupply midway because it was costing a lot of material to do so. And I would do this for literally the whole day and through the whole night until until day 176 came around, I started to create the trophy room. I added the trophies that I got from the Twilight Forest and I think it came out to be looking pretty well. I then was reminded that I forgot to do pest control inside of the house. No f***ing way, there's a cockroach in the house, man. They got the uncomfortable jitters. Oh wait, hold on, let me look around, is there any cockroaches in my room? Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. After getting rid of that hell spawn, I got the trophy room done and added the little modules you get from the Twilight Forest to the side. Continued working on the house from nighttime until the next day. Day 177. I continued working on the house. Trust me, this isn't all I do. I am simply just waiting for the weather. I did get the roof done, and here were my thoughts. Weather doesn't exist. I'm convinced. Like, whoa, whoa why hasn't it rained? Oh, would you look at that? It looks like it just has a big forehead. The house, I think from this POV, it looks brilliant. I gotta say, this is an S tier house. Yeah, the house has a pretty big forehead. Anyways, I brought Lean to the porch so that he would sit there and wouldn't be stuck inside for the rest of his life. Eh, yeah, it really doesn't cost that much. Plus so we get sharpness 5 and unbreaking and mending. And I literally waited from night until day 178 to see if it would rain. Unfortunately, it did not once again. I started that day out by going down into the nearby mine and collected redstone because I literally had zero redstone in the supply room. And I got the season sensor to show how it actually works. Oh, so whichever one's the right one. So what is spring? Next is fall. Wait, next is summer. Oh, f me it's not gonna rain is it i went forward in time by sleeping on the hammock and throughout the night i farmed gravel to get flint created arrows with the flint i collected and i created the oblivion stone which i referenced a couple days ago or the lucha mask like i like to call it do not start raining when i'm gone i swear it's just a quick business trip that's all. I decided to take a gamble, or not really. I, I realized I could go out to travel, and if it started to rain, I could just warp stone home. I did not have any pumpkins, so I went out on a business trip, as I said, to go collect that material because I needed it to create an iron golem. I also collected the trees that were within this pumpkin forest because it gives you green planks, which can create a nice door. Day 179, I warp stone home, and I created an iron golem inside of my house and gave him the lucha mask. All right, iron golem be mine. And then? Ah, so it's the Giga Chad version. Okay, I guess there's no better name to give you then. And Giga Chad. Damn right that Iron Golem was an absolute Giga Chad. Decided to speed up time, didn't rain, so I just decided to go to sleep. W's? Nope, no W's. L's, L's, and L's, and L's. It's up to Mother Nature, not me. Can't do anything about it. Still have my balls gripped by Mother Nature, hoping it will ungrip me soon. Mother Nature still had a firm grasp on my balls. I decided to create a little sheep farm by my house. I collected the materials to do that, and I created their little pen. I went out to collect nearby sheep that were in the area to bring them inside of the pen, and I bred the first two that were in there. Fun fact, I never bred them again. And then, the unthinkable happened. 
It's raining! Oh my god. The time's ticking. Go, go, go! Alright, let's find this son of a bitch. When I was in creative, in the test world, they seemed to spawn a lot. Magician! Where? F Hold on, I know what's cucking me. So what was cucking me was one of the resource packs where it gives the icon or head picture, kind of like a figure in a Star Wars game, and the colors of the magician would blend in with the map. So I removed that resource pack so that the name or title would be read out on the map and not to the face or icon. It's hard to see in the rain. Oh! Two! I'm trying to read out their names. I don't see them. Magician! I see it. Ready for an ass pounding? Okay. What is going on? Telekinesis! Eat my ass. That's right, boys. That's how we do it here. Waited 10 days for a 10 second boss battle. Nice. Damn right I waited 10 days for that 10 second battle. And I only got a bloody soul heart, which didn't even come from the magician himself. Next was the crystal golem, in order for the kill to count on the quest line. Yeah, I'm guessing you don't like arrows. Do you like this though? I don't have enough energy. Oh no. Oh, I do. Come on. I need it for the trick shotting montage. There we go. We are officially set up for Nightblade. All right, let's craft this thing. The Eye of Abyss has been officially crafted. After those statements, I did go to sleep. Let's show how powerful we are by going to a Woodland Mansion. How about that? And on day 181, I would keep my word and ping a Woodland Mansion. However, this one was very different. So normally it would spawn in the Woodlands, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we found a savannah one. Before I got to the location, I found a tower which had a waystone. Of course, I collected it. And I found this action pack windmill. Enjoy the surprise that comes at the end. See another structure. Whoa. Looks like we're going on some side quests today. Okay, this is broken. TNT? Fuck! Holy shit! Oh my god, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I thought it was just a nice little light. Let me guess, this is also TNT? Ah, the chest. I'm glad that didn't go into pieces. Oh, buddy, hell, I'm out of here. That was quite the surprise. I continued my way to where I was truly going, and I ended up not in the Woodland Mansion, but the Savannah Mansion. Wow, that is weird looking at a different variant. All right, let's have another display of power. I'm just here for the evokers. I could honestly spare the lives of the rest, but I don't care. I was here to specifically restock on Totem of Undyings. I really wanted to play safe for the final boss battle against Nightblade. So that's exactly what I did. I killed every single evoker in this mansion. I think I ended up with like six or seven Totem of Undyings after killing every single one within the mansion. So normally I would warp stone home. However, if I run into something cool on the way home, I'm gonna do it. Hey, snake. Be gone. <laughs> I know what you can do to me. Yeah, let me do a weird, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna do a 90 degree to go back home. One of these, oh, one of these. Uh, I don't remember if the big boy one has anything though. Who killed this thing? The Mandalorian did. Goats! Wait, can't they like kick you? After running into that colossal structure and some goats, or my brethren, you could say that, I went to sleep. Day 182, I would return to the lands of the Forbidden Dragons, or they're actually called Nagas, and I would face them once and for all. There you are, pussy. Oh, Betsy, eh? Get shit on. Okay, so when they're about to spray their piss, is when you shoot him. Bang. Didn't mean to do that. Winging it. I killed one? What? <laughs> oh, they're dropping like flies. Literally. So 
All right, pussy. Oh, and then it goes on the ground, and you go for the KO. Damn it! I wanted to go for the KO. Oh, it died. Drop something. Dude, they just spawned out of thin air. Mine. That's right, boy. No need to make them go extinct. Let's go to the broken city now. All right, well, now we know. You just gotta wait for them to go in attack mode. And then you get them with a good old arrow. Ah, I found more. Oh, these are Nagas. Why is there like three different things called Nagas? There's one in the nether, one here, and one in the Twilight Forest. I had no idea these were called Nagas. I, I mentioned earlier with my voiceover that I knew that. But uh, up until this point, I thought these were just dragons. Which is why it confuses me that there are like three different things called Nagas. But oh well. The next destination was a place I marked on the map a long time ago. I called it the Broken City. And I'll start my campaign from the bottom. Guns and Roses. Oh, come on, don't tell me I need to get lighting, bro. It goes down. Okay, so this is the entrance, I guess. Overall, the rooms were almost all identical on the way up. They had a spawner and some stairs heading up. There was also this outside area with a cherry tree that looked pretty cool. But there was this room that was set up to scare the shit out of me. It goes higher here. <gasps> oh my god! Oh! There's more! Why is it only creepers? <laughs> Parkour, huh? Oh yeah, I can do it in the dark. Hacks? I think none. After totally not cheating that parkour, I went to the top of the tower, where there was a spawner that spawned phantoms with skeletons riding on them. They were very weak, and the chest loot up top really isn't that good at this point, due to the progression I have made on this world. There were like five of these rooftop areas in this broken city. I checked them out real quick, didn't really care for the loot, and on my way back home, I ran into a jungle temple. Jungle temple? Who doesn't love or sell some vanilla Minecraft? Not cheating. Just, just doing the right thing. That's what I get. Chocolate bars? Chocolate spider eye? Okay, dude. Why do I feel like that exists in real life? Let me know if that actually does. On the way back home, I took a little pit stop and went to sleep. Day 183, I made it to this very beautiful flower biome. And I saw a hummingbird. Oh, look at the hummingbird! Kind of find this ironic because there's literally a hummingbird nest in my backyard. Just thought that was pretty cool. A lot of you are probably saying, who... Asked. I collected the flowers that were in this biome, and I found a downstairs path that gave me the achievement when in Rome, but I already knew that. Now, is this the when in Rome achievement? Aha, I knew it. Nothing for me here, though. As I kept on traveling, I found this little fisher's outpost. Fishing in the dark. I think I remember this. The hell? that face might as well take it when i got home i added the flowers on these little flower beds that i created a while back and i added the buttercup flowers by the bees and it gave off this really cool effect that's a cool effect dude look at that almost feels like i'm in a whole different dimension with all these effects the chocolate bars that i got from the jungle temple they gave you a effect that i had no idea existed in this mod pack a sugar rush whoa what does that give me sugar rush i'm guessing i'm just on crack yep what the hell? Is that the end of a sugar rush? After that exaggerating effect of a sugar rush, I added lanterns throughout the house to add lighting and I think it fitted pretty well overall. Once I was done with that, I went to sleep. This time, on day 184, we kill Nightblade and complete better Minecraft. Shut up about the nether. I don't care about that last thing. That is right. Today was the day I would face on Nightblade, which is the final boss of this mod pack. I added soul hearts to each altar one by one. Every day has led up to this very moment and now would be the armageddon battle of better minecraft enjoy what the fuck i'm flying whoa i can move My turn now, bitch. That's right. I'm still floating. Oh god. 1000 hearts! One of these to play it safe. There's a crystal golem! Oh god. Oh, there's more night blades. 
That's a lot of mobs. That's a lot of mobs. Who do I use the glass sword on? Nightblade. One hit wonder, baby. That's what you are. <gasps> Get off of me! That's right. Come on, we're so goddamn close. What the hell? Come on. That's night boy. Come on. Couple more! Yes! Get off me, pussies. Oh my. The Sword of the Abyss. I don't think we could have gotten more prepared for that fight. Dude, the fight literally started all the way here. What the heck happened? As I was heading back, I started to discover the true power of the sword I had just obtained. It's time to use this bad boy. What? Wait, what was that? Hold on, I gotta test this. It's like swipe, swipe, swipe. Did you, did you hear that? It does like a, a triple swipe. What? Oh my gosh. Back home as the sun goes down. Let's claim our rewards. 10 slime fusion? Totem of Abyss activates when below three hearts. 10 Encorite gems. Two Unorite ingots. And a bunch of XP. All right. How cycle am I to try and do this? I believe we try and complete better Minecraft. No matter the bullshit. I believe it is still possible and nothing's gonna stop me. Objection, your honor? Bullshit. Yeah, that motivational speech came out my ass, but it was indeed pure bullshit. Although I sounded very motivated. Here are my thoughts as I kept on traveling throughout the nether, hoping to find that one bloody boss. If this is the thing that keeps me from getting 100% in this game, in terms of the quest line, I'm I'm really disappointed, just straight up. And I would end up just going home and never try again to find that boss, because honestly, I don't know what the collective number is, but I spent easily a couple hours searching for the nether keeper, and I was absolutely done with it. I guarantee you it's some stupid bug, and I would express my frustration the next day. That's just so fucked up. If it's just some dumb config file that is stopping me from getting a crimson forest or whatever the fuck. I'm so disappointed. I'm gonna do a little, little side quest and we're gonna find ourselves a village. Now I would be doing a side quest. I wanted to do a raid in an open area. So I set out to find a village. On my way out, I found some pillagers who were waiting to run up on me, but they came a little too early because I didn't want the raid to start automatically as I arrived to a village. Eventually I found this desert village. Here are some of my thoughts. I say we do a raid out here in the wild and we do fail if they do die. I begin preparation of creating a perimeter around this village and started collecting logs, added a waystone, and added the fencing that would create what I thought to be a safe perimeter. Our goal is to protect the village and we're not gonna do it with like putting them in obsidian. We straight up just gotta protect them. I did this for the whole day and then went to sleep. Day 187, I continued working on the perimeter for the village. I got the perimeter done and headed home to create another lucha stone and then went to sleep. Day 188, I unintentionally found another power to the Sword of the Abyss. What did I just do? Oh my gosh, bro. How did I not know of this? I would use this newly found power on the pillager outpost I was going to take out in order to get bad omen. Who's the one with the banner? There he is. There we go. Thought this area to be cool, so I wanted to see the sunsets here. I warp stone home afterwards and then went to sleep. Day 189, I restocked on my stake supply and would bring Giga Chad over to the village where the war would begin. Alright, let's go Giga Chad. It's time to we go to war.
It's gonna start right away, boys. Get to your houses. Giga chat number two, I need you. Bang. Get in, lads. Enjoy this absolute kill streak of a montage where I look like Levi from Attack on Titan, just swiping at the speed of light, killing anything that comes in my path. <laughs> Oh my god, everyone went off. <laughs> Hit him guard from the back. Nice teamwork right there. Yo, I feel like I'm in an anime when I do that sprint thing. Oh my god, look at the way they come pouring in. Holy shit. It is way different seeing them in the pure open. Oh god. Oh. Fuck it. I gotta use the ring. Don't die before my eyes. That's a lot, bro. How am I even still alive? Chose to go to sleep real quick so other mobs wouldn't interfere. Is Giga Chat still here? I don't see anyone on the map. I don't see any iron golems. And they spawned inside. Brilliant. It's over. Get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. Use the ring. <laughs> that is so clean. I, I, we lost. They killed everyone. No way. I'm a failure. What have I done? Lost. Giga Chad died, and all the villagers along with it. It was once a prosperous village, is now nothing. Not even the younglings survived. I brought war to a village that was just peacefully living on their own, and I felt absolutely guilty that the villagers and the two Giga Chads were killed in action. I decided to create a memorial in what was now a ghost town, and sat there to see the sun set and the moon to rise. Look at those little speck. Fitting for this ghost town. Maybe it's the souls of those who just died. I would go home with shame and guilt and went to sleep. Day 191. I would start by exploring and ran into Shamu. Some of you guys will understand that reference. Is that an orca whale? <gasps> Yo. Shamu. Free Willy. Is that like a Sea World reference? Or one of the orcas that unfortunately passed away. Because I had not done it yet, I wanted to go take out a guardian temple, which is exactly what I did. I took out every elder guardian, which was pretty easy, to say the least. Looks like our business here is done. And when I was done, the sun was beginning to set, and I got to see, I guess you can consider the northern lights in better Minecraft. After sitting to see that amazing view, I went home and went to sleep. Day 192, I'll take out all the OP enchants on my netherite sword, and looked at how much it costed to add it to the abyss sword. Hey, that's not too bad. I found out about a guardian lantern, which I added to the downstairs area to spice it up a little bit. I then found out about a Pac-Man lantern, so of course I went out to gather the materials to create it, which I did, and added it to the downstairs area too. I also created a wither skeleton lantern, and I guess that little square area under the supply room was now filled with mob lanterns. I needed to gain levels in order to add the enchants to my 
my sword, so I went enchanted fish hunting and did farming for the rest of the day until I went to sleep. Day 193, I went to trade with the villagers, and with the emeralds I got from them, I purchased other items to gain XP, but I also got some very cool new foods. I was so close to level 28, so I went back to farm more crops and traded until I got level 28. And I also discovered another new food. Ah, he's leveled up. A mint cake? That sounds good. Any mint lovers here too? You either love mint, like mint chocolate chip, or you hate it. Some say it tastes like toothpaste. I think it tastes amazing. I then put together arguably the most powerful sword in better Minecraft. The most powerful sword in this game. Added a little countertop to the kitchen area and added the cakes that I got from the villagers. Now I wanted to create a little memorial for Giga Chad. So I started collecting some cobblestone. I do need the stone cutter, which I left at the graveyard. I started making the statue, but I needed something to reference. I spawned another one. So I created another iron golem in the house and then went to sleep. Day 194, I made a lot of progress on the construction of the iron golem and assume when I'm making this, I'm not gonna show it, but I constantly went back and forth to reference with the iron golem. Here's what the beta version looked like and I was not satisfied with it at all. Shit. We need to make the legs bigger. I had to take down the original statue to extend the legs. So I did this for the rest of the day and then went to sleep. Day 195, I continued the construction of the statue. Screw it, we just gotta commit. If it turns out to be a Ronaldo statue, oh well. That was my goal. Just do not make it as bad as the Ronaldo statue. I continued construction on the statue for the rest of the day and then went to sleep. Day 196, I added the arms to the iron golem and the unibrow, which I would choose to replace later on. An idea I had for this iron golem was to add a tree coming out of its head, which is what I added, and this is what it came out to be. It grew! Nice! Nice! I added trees around the statue and then would go to sleep. Day 197, I started my day off by searching for moss-like blocks, which were in the underground cave near the house. I collected some vines, moss blocks, and azaleas. I'm just gonna go with that and hope I said it right. And I added it to the iron golem, or the stone golem, if you wanna be a smart ass. I also replaced the unibrow and added deep slate because I felt like it looked much better and blended in with the colors that were present. I added the green stuff to the iron golem for the rest of the day and then went to sleep. Day 198, I added some lanterns to the build and made a huge mistake. What the fuck? How did I break that so fast? No! <laughs> uh, I guess that represents what happened in battle. Jesus. Hideous. Ah, uh, we gotta repair it. I accidentally had my vein mining pickaxe out still when I went out to collect more materials, but it is an easy fix. I added a heart of gold inside of the build because that's exactly what Giga Chats have. I added more lighting throughout the build and chopped down a tree which came out to the shape of, well, I guess I'll let you guys decide what the shape of it is that will determine your maturity. Oh. Nice. It has not too much light, but just enough. I like that. Nice. Pretty proud of it. Look at that. Yep, what I said. After that, I went to sleep. Day 199, I would add the stone tablets honoring Gigachad and did some terraforming around the area in honor of Gigachad. There it is in its glory. Let's give him a modal ball. Loop. <sighs> Thinking about this, this may be the last time I am ever in better Minecraft. Man. It's crazy to think one year ago I was introduced to this mod pack. I was getting very reminiscent as my final day was coming to a close on this world and I had to see the sunset with the statue in the background. I was very proud of the build and overall what I have done in this world. I took a look around to everything I had created and as I walked inside of the house I took one last glance at the statue, opened the doors, looked over the cakes, went up the stairs, and would go to sleep one final time in this world. 200 days, man. Wow. I woke up the next day, and it was day 200, completing this 200-day series. Thank you so much for taking a chance with me and watching this video. If you were entertained or enjoyed any part, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me for all the hours I put into these videos. And also, comment down below what you want to see next. Also, I have a big announcement. You may have noticed, but there is now a join button on the bottom of every video. If you haven't guessed it, I am going to be live streaming on YouTube 
as much as possible. So if you want to become a member, some of the perks are the emotes I have to offer. When it comes to replying, your comments are a priority and your names will be featured at the end of each video as a thank you for you guys who become members. So I hope to see you guys at the first live stream. Thank you so much and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya. Outro 7 voice. Ooh. Well, if you haven't left yet, go check out this video right here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And for you few who are listening to me, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. It really means the world to me. Your loyalty is what I value. And I hope one day for you guys to be there when my vision comes to light.